hello and welcome to my channel if you're new here welcome if you're not yet subscribed please subscribe I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers guys so please just do the things that make the thing happen so as you can tell from the name of the channel my name is Mont Shifamba and as you can tell from the title of the video this this time we're going to talk about how to become a lecturer in Zimbabwe how I became one is I did my master's at the University of Zimbabwe and as a way of sponsoring my master's I was uh, a graduate teaching assistant so a graduate teaching assistant means you are going to you're a teaching assistant basically while you do your graduate degree or postgrad so the way you then get paid is through a stipend it's very 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 little a stipend and then you also get your fees waived then uh, after that I, I graduated with merit and there were only two people who graduated with merit in my class so I was then offered a job to be a part-time lecturer I already work as some of you may know I'm an auditor I will do a video for that later so I'm an auditor um, so I didn't have the scope to become a full-time lecturer and also the offer wasn't to be a full-time lecturer anyway but then I became a part-time lecturer the other guy that I became a part-time lecturer with uh, also then leveraged her, his part-time lecturership to become a full-time lecturer. Now, there are two types of lecturers so you can then hear. It's a part-time lecturer and a full-time lecturer. Full-time lecturer means you're not employed anywhere else. This is your employment. You get a salary every month from the university. Part-time lecturer means you are employed elsewhere. This is a side gig. Um, and you only get paid for the contact hours that you have with the students. We'll talk about that when we talk about salaries. So what I did is I put out a, a questionnaire on my uh, Instagram in my Facebook and I asked you guys what you would want to know about becoming a lecturer in Zimbabwe. And I got the answers and some of these are... The, I got the answers as questions. This is some of the questions that I was trying to answer in this video. All right. So, uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram and Facebook, you might need to because sometimes I post fun stuff or nice stuff. Right. So the first question that I seen uh, was what are the qualities that you need. The first thing that you're going to need is patience because you're need, you're, you're dealing with a lot of people and and they're probably young and be they try to test your about your limits and um, how far they can stretch you. So I did um, I was a lecturer when I was only twenty and the youngest probably person at university is probably nineteen. Some people are actually older than me, especially the part time classes. So. Um, you need patience to deal with them because especially the younger ones the older ones we had no issues but the, the younger ones they keep trying you just keep trying and then it was also weird because like we're almost like the same age so it's like we're friends but then at the same time they're calling me ma'am 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 oh my god uh, you know, just kind of, uh, you know what, we're just almost the same age. So that, you need know, patience. You also need time because most universities have a minimum time, uh, um, what do you call it? They have a minimum uh, contact hours. So for the university that I worked at, it was four hours at least every week. So you need to make sure that you have time, those four hours to commit, which are contact. This doesn't include um marking assessments or marking exams this is contact with the students it's four hours if you're a part-time but then if you're full-time you don't you you don't have so much control of course you do you can say you know what i would prefer to go to this class in that class but then you don't have a control because this is your full-time employer so you might be given five three two courses to to run with so you actually need to have time and commitment for this thing then you also need continuing education as i, t I told you i was given an offer from my master just from my master's because when i had experience as a um, teaching assistant and then the plan then was for me to do my was that i was going to do my phd so you also need to go uh, to have the commitment to continually improve yourself because most likely if you're going to come from outside and you want to be a lecturer, you're going to need a PhD. But if you're if you don't have a PhD but you've gone through the system, the the school's masters, they might consider you as they have considered as they considered me and then they consider this other friend of mine and now he's actually a full time lecturer because also he has so much passion for it and then when they offered him the um, opportunity to do a must to do a part time lecture, he 
put his all into it. He really threw himself in there and then he proved himself. So he became a full-time um, lecturer in like a year. Then um, you also need self-control, guys. People try you. Some people who not want to go through coursework and then they want you to just, ma'am, can I just, can we just do as adults, you know, so that you give them, a, you give them their mark, uh, whatever, or in the exam, like, ma'am, are you marking on how paper is okay? Like, really? What does that even mean? So you need self-control and then you also need, of course, confidence as you're going to present your, to your classes. Um, I had a pretty huge class, I had like 500 students, so it was really like a lot. So you need confidence, you need self-control, right? Then um, someone said, what are the responsibilities of a, of a lecturer? So when I was uh, a lecturer, we were in the process of revising course for course outlines as on what it is that was being taught in every course so we had also to sit down and do uh, course outlines for the subject that we feel like we know if you feel like you know financial accounting then you know what okay probably the industry needs this and that and that so we, that is part of the role as a lecture the other part the obvious one is delivering lectures so what you do is actually after you get the job, you actually just go to the faculty and they'll give you a timetable and then you'll know when you are you and you're due to come to actually present to classes. It's that easy. And then um, you have to assess work. So the so it's, you get your timetable, you deliver lectures, and then you also have to prepare assessments and mark those assessments. Then you also have to prepare the final exam. Uh, like you literally get give, you're literally being given people's futures because you actually have to prepare the exam based on what you have taught people or what you hope to teach because the exam setting is done pretty early in the semester so you prepare the exam you send it to the exam so you discuss it at the faculty and then you send it to the external examiner then they bring back the comments and then you're supposed to address those and then before it's finalized it's your responsibilities it's your responsibility to make sure that your exam is printed um usually the the, the university takes the responsibility to keep it safe until exam day but you're also supposed to attend exam days in case of any queries or any errors that people didn't pick up and students have so that you'll be able to to address those in real time okay and then career progression so you can start off as a, um, a graduate teaching assistant or a teaching assistant which is usually called tutor in Zimbabwe you can start off as a tutor then you get substantiated into a lecturer so as a lecturer you might not start off as a full-time lecturer you can start off as a part-time and then you graduate into a full-time if you get the contract probably if you show yourself well or you start doing your PhD or stuff like that and then you then um, become a, a, a substantive lecturer then my university didn't have something called a senior lecturer what we know is just once you become a lecturer you're a lecturer and then there comes a time when you when people vote for who they want to be a chairman of the department then that elevates you um above other lecturers and you become like a chairman of the university or a chair lady chairperson let's just say chairperson of your department then from chairperson then the next thing that you can then be is a dean and probably then become the vice chancellor but the pre career progression once you reach becoming a full-time lecturer is really slow so you might spend most of your time off as a um as a lecturer before i know some people who have never become <laughs> chairperson <laughs> so in that part yeah then um the other thing is the most important part is salary how much a lecture is paid so i'm not going to talk about zoom dollars because they will charge probably by the time i give you this video the rate is at 60 <laughs> who knows but i'm going to give you guys a general idea based on uh based on uh usd era in the usd era the average for for lecturers was around 50 to 55 at across all universities and you had a limit of let's say 60 hours so that means as a part-time lecturer for those three months that you have in contact with you know, with the students you can claim up to probably 3.3 grand us dollars and that's pretty much that's a lot of money hey 
if you ask me it is a lot if you, especially if you're young and you don't have responsibilities but the downside is if you don't have another job and you're part-time nature that means that's your salary for six months yes that part because if you're part-time lecture you don't get paid when the university is not up and you don't have any conduct uh conduct hours but if you are a full-time lecturer the salary used to be around that range around 2.1 to 2.5 somewhere there per month is a full-time lecture so you could actually get away with this and as a full-time lecturer you get paid whether the university is up or the university is not up now the university that I worked at did not pay for uh, marking papers, marking exam papers. So, but I know a university that actually does. But that one university, their rate per hour for part-time lecturers is actually lower than uh, the average range around universities of 50 to 55. Please note, these are rates for undergrad lecturers. If you want to be a postgrad lecturer, that means you now need to have actually... Um, attained your PhD and I don't know about that I was never uh, exposed to that so I don't know then is it doable with other jobs mm, absolutely if you can figure out four hours of contact time I guess the, uh, the marking of assessments setting exams uh, can be done of work hours so if you have another job is it doable but then the other other problem that I once that I saw was the issue of um, um, it used to be so sometimes they would just you have department meetings that just pop up like on a Monday you're told on Wednesday you need to be here too there's a department meeting and then you have probably another commitment at your full-time job so you can't really just take off on a whim like that to go to your side gig you know what a side gig is supposed to know its place but then sometimes things just pop up and then sometimes when they discuss exams they didn't have a slot to say your exam is going to be discussed at 11 you would come in and then of course they would have a, high, uh, a sequence that they were going to start with this exam and then and that. but then sometimes some exams took longer some took shorter and then it would be like a mess for you to actually know what time you also be discussed so you sometimes you end up spending the whole day you would need to actually spend the whole day at the uni and then that would probably work well with your other job but aside from that yeah and it's a good side side gig um if you take up in for the the assessments the marking because i had like 500 kids that was like a lot but if you take that down you can do it with other jobs and then the last two questions were well, what was the upside and the downside the upside was the extra money <laughs> Two, I was giving back to a community that it brought me up since I was 14. And then three, I felt important, you know, when we're revising course, course outlines, you know, trying to say, based on my experience as well with the industry and also the shortfalls that I had seen in the degree when I went to do my postgrad um, certificate elsewhere and the shortfalls that I had noticed. And then here I was given a chance to actually fix that error for or fix that gap it wasn't really an error, but a gap. So yeah, I was given a, given a chance to actually fix that gap for other people that are coming up to me. That felt good. And then also I got to be around people, uh, get to be around a lot of people sometimes. Uh, the part-time students that these are people working in a b c d e and they bring so much of different perspectives and um even the undergrads uh the full-time sorry the full-time uh, classes the different characters you get to learn more about them and you get to learn more about yourself as a lecturer and then um the downside would be as i said that the investment the time investment and especially if you have a highly stressful job it could be very very stressful so you might need to consider that carefully before you commit to becoming a full-time lecturer and then to just answer the last 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 question someone asked me that if you have like cta itc apc like which is like your qualified to the government um government tends to be a little bit more bureaucratic and they kind of have like late procedures and it's unfortunate that they do not have um uh, they're not yet at that point where people can say you know what a started accounting definitely knows a lot about accounting they should um, be able to lecture accounting if they want to 
they're not yet there so they will still require masters from you it's very unfortunate but it is what it is unless probably you're like a decorated um a chartered accountant like probably you're like a, an owner of caa or like a past president you're like that decorated then they can then entertain the idea of having you as a as a lecturer at the uni but other than that just being a chartered accountant will not cut it at these universities at least for now i hope that it changes but for now it is what it is they will need some sort of masters they believe they in their degree masters phd system more than the ca system i'm bored so i know that a ca is qualified to teach accounting but the university doesn't know that so that's a gap that needs to also be addressed other than that that is all that i figured people wanted to know if you have any more questions that you might need to know don't for, don't um don't hesitate to actually sound off in the comment section. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it and to subscribe to this channel. Until the next video, thank you for stopping by.